particular view to get it exactly how you want it. So this is a great area for letting production planners essentially um, do their work. Now there are other charts available as well. So if I now go to the organization view of the system, again we can see those resource groups that we looked at earlier, the banks of people, the banks of machines, etc. Uh, and I can do capacity loading views from there as well. So once this comes up, it's going to give me a list of um, requirements on a day-by-day -day basis for that particular team or department. Uh, and we can very quickly see that we've actually got one that's overbooked here. So again, I'm looking at my capacity strain, constraints, looking at either an individual uh, team or a, an individual person within that list or an individual machine. I can see where we may have any overbooked resources uh, going down the list there. So it's showing my standard capacity and what's actually been reserved to it and the amount of time available uh, per machine, tooling, uh, person, etc. I can also look at that view in a graphical manner. So again, I'll just choose to click on OK there. So in this case, the blue area is showing our capacity, the blue box is showing our capacity, uh, and the orange blocks are showing what we've actually reserved against it. So this fits in line with what we've just seen actually, in that we're overbooked on this day, but they're following on from them, we're OK. Um, so that again is other ways of actually viewing the similar data uh, that is recorded within the system. OK, so that's a little bit about uh, scheduling and the tools that we have there. Now in terms of actually execution of the manufacturing process, um, what you'll see here as part of production is that we've got a manufacturing execution area. And this has two immediate tools that are uh, available to me. So here if I choose a particular production unit, I don't need to define a resource, sorry, and open that up. What you can see is this is actually a, a touch screen type operation where I can choose from a work to list for this particular work cell or department and I can then resequence this. So on the shop floor if I decide that I need to move things around I've got some great tools there to actually do that. So I can actually just use the touch screen to touch the works order or the operation. I can use the move up and move down buttons. I can move this to perhaps to a different production area. Um, I can look at the capacity loading against that production area, I can look at the material requirements that are necessary for it and see where we might have shortfalls, etc. So it's, it's a great way from a, a, a supervisor's point of view really of actually just looking at the work to list, starting to action it and starting to work with it um, and, and fine tuning the actual day's production. From a worker's point of view, I have a, a job registration screen and again this is enabled for touch screen type operations. Um, but it's designed to actually give me my work to list and to actually then start to actually record jobs uh, that I'm going into. So for this particular resource, I can actually start to sign on as a particular person. So I'm scanning a badge there, or again, I'm using touch screens. Um, now, in this case, I have no jobs assigned to me, but if I want to look at any jobs that are available, then I can choose the view here and say, show me production jobs. And again, from this, it's designed to be a touch screen where I can actually touch the job that I want to, I can then click on the start button um, to say that I'm actually currently starting that. The clock is ticking at that point. Uh, essentially what is happening is we're actually recording the time actually spent using clocking in and clocking out activities. That can be combined with barcode scanning as well. So if you have um, um, production documentation root cards that are generated from the system, for example, then I can start to action those and scan those directly to actually record the activities. You can also see I can actually scan onto what are called indirect activities. So if we're going into departmental meetings, etc., I want to record that time, but I want to record it against uh, a different categorization. I can do. I've got the options there for taking breaks. I've also got the options for doing things like converting flexi time and so forth. So it's a very flexible area of the system. It gives me a lot of capabilities to actually look at the things that I'm doing, start the jobs. Um, and get particular views. I can also see an attendance overview of my team, so who is in and who is out of the, the business at this point in time, um, and, and so forth. So lots of different sorts of things that we can do from uh, that part of the system. Really is trying to just improve the way that we're actually uh, enabling people on the shop floor to record their actual times and get the information back. Now as part of that process, we can also have quality management features um, now, we probably haven't got time to go into these in uh, any great detail today, uh, but just to give you a quick overview from its capabilities, really. We have the ability to actually launch what are called quality orders from many different parts of the system. So, for example, um, we're looking at production orders or works orders there. While I'm doing works orders, 
I might be doing inline production tests and I want to trigger off a quality order to make sure those tests are actually captured. Likewise, I might want to do this at receipt of uh, materials. I might want to launch a quality order to the QA team, the inspection team to say, please check these items and perform these measurements, etc. So we can define the rules here uh, within the system to actually generate quality orders. Now those quality orders are where we actually capture the test results and of course those te test results we may actually choose to go into different SPCs pieces of software then to do the statistical analysis. If we do have a non-conformance then that again is recorded in the system and non-conformance we can then have concession management again approval can come into play there to actually say is this material out of spec, truly out of spec, is it available to be used in any other way, can it be used in a rework scenario for example. Now, against the non-conformance we can also raise a corrective action. So what we're doing there is we're not just recording the root cause analysis, we're actually trying to specify how it's, we're actually going to prevent this from happening again in the future. And again as we're going through that for the non-conformances and the corrective actions, we can start recording the amount of time we've actually spent performing those uh, particular quality management issues expenses that we've incurred, additional materials we've had to incur. So we're not only just getting the quality results coming from the system and the quality details, we're actually looking at the cost of that quality failure as well within the system. So very quickly I'll just take you into some of those areas where that's actually set up within um, the system. So we're going back into AX and this is actually defined in the inventory warehouse and management. So within here I've basically got the area where we have quality orders, so these are where we actually define and control the quality tests. So for this example I can see that the tests have been completed. This is actually for a purchase order, but equally it could be for a production order, but I've completed the packaging test and the document. I've written the moisture test, but we've actually got and I can see the measurements have been taken uh, as well. Now that may of course be so the non-conformance allows me to actually record things like as I mentioned, things like the root cause analysis, I can see exactly what status that that's at, uh, whether any actions have been completed, etc. Um, and I can also do things from here like print non-conformance tags or corrective reports, etc. Now the non-conformance tag is great, basically a label that you can slap onto the materials to say these are under quarantine, so you've got those sort of tools available directly from that. Uh, and as I mentioned, from a non-conformance we can raise a corrective action, in this case a machine adjustment is necessary, this work is responsible for it, the priority to that is low, etc. So again, you've got those sort of details that you're starting to put in place there. And it's all really about controlling that quality management issue that has been identified. So that's a few details about the, the quality management. Lots of areas I could go into in there, but of course time's a bit tight, so we won't be going into those today. Now one thing I did want to finish off with is looking at some of the lean manufacturing capabilities within the system as well. So here you'll be able to see, for example, we've got a, a lean manufacturing area where I've got, first of all, a, a Kanban scheduling board. So the Kanban scheduling board is very similar to what we've seen from a, a, a Gantt chart view, but of course these aren't Gantt charts now, these individual icons that we're seeing here are, are Kanban cards. And again, it is a drag and drop environment, so I can move this around and I can move content back and forward. Importantly, you'll see for this particular work cell, SB, sorry, SCPS cover, um, we'll see the, the actual tack times, 250 per day is what we're capable of doing. Now that 250 may mean something to one product, uh, another product may be particularly complex of course, which means it take, takes longer, and all of that can be defined within the system. But this really is an area where I can just start to actually drag and drop just to do the scheduling activities, uh, and we're seeing there that now I've got 250 out of the 250, I've suddenly gone over and I'm using 255 out of the 250 available. So it's just a different way of working, we're actually defining Kanbans to work instead of thinking about processes and routes and operations, and we're actually defining the actual process flow um, through the entire system as well. So we're using much more lean and manufacturing methods to do that. And you can also see a tack time bar here, so where this is saying speed up, basically we're trying to keep that green bar of course dead central all the time, so here we're actually starting to fall behind, I can see that this work cell is starting to slip behind a little bit and I can start to actually move that forward uh, as well. So lean manufacturing, a big topic in its own right, and again we could be spending a lot of time in sort of the definition of that.